Eagles Nation, what is up? Tom, views from the link TV. Whew, what a huge win. I mean, it feels great knowing that your team can overcome so much adversity and still win games, injuries, you know, poor officiating. And I'm not one to always, you know, point my fingers at the ref. I'm not not that type of guy. Not so much over specific calls, but when you call a one-sided game, it's obvious. And things about Pete Morelli and his crew have come out since the game. It's kind of old news now, you know, dropping this video a week later. But it's bad. I mean, it reminded me of last year's Detroit Lions game. Um, they they really got a lot more. They had, you know, somewhat like 14 penalties in that game to, compared to the Lions having one or something like that. And I'm sorry, but if you're calling the game that precise, then there's going to be holding and pass interference on both sides. And there was a clear pass interference on Alshon Jeffrey that wasn't called. So, look, I'm not one to blame the refs saying, you know, they, they did anything or they were trying to fix the game. It was just a poorly officiated game. Um, and and that I'm not I'm not one to usually say that, but I, I can, you know, I can be real about it when, when, it, when it happens. And not just because it's – I mean, look, if it was for my team, would I be saying the same thing? Yes, I would, but I would say, hey, that's just how it goes sometimes because of situations like this. I've seen it against my team as well. So usually it all balances out. But um, but it, I mean, come on! I mean, there was there was some clear, some clear, you know, like favoritism. Um, but you know, I'm not going to get into it. The Eagles won the game. They played, you know, a better game than Carolina, and that's that's what it comes down to. So I'm not I'm not really going to spend much time on that. It's bird buzz. Um, so I have questions, and you know, I think this long week leading into you know this Washington game. I think the long week, it gives you a time as a fan to, to take a step back and look at what this team's done. Um, four games on the road so far. Uh, I think that's the highest in the NFL. They went 1-7 and seven on the road last year. They're 3-1 and one in those games. Um, I mean, you're 2-0 and oh in the division <clears throat> with, a, with a chance at home on Monday night to go 3-0 and oh in the division by sweeping the Washington Redskins. You haven't lost in the NFC, and your only loss actually is against who many have said is the best team in football since week one. Um, they just suffered their first loss to Pittsburgh this week, but that's the, the Kansas City Chiefs on the road is the game that the Eagles lost this year. And you got When you take a step back and look at how far this team seemingly come, I mean, look at it this way. We have, the Eagles have five wins this year in their first six games, and they still have San Francisco and Chicago on the schedule at home. Now, I'm not guaranteeing anything, you know, anything can happen, but the Eagles should win those games. They're a better team. They're more advanced. Those, those are two games that anyone would say, oh, of course they'd beat them. So right now, it looks like seven wins is a minimum. Um... I mean, and then you're not only going to win two more games all season, it doesn't seem so. I mean, already having five wins, no matter how you slice it, um, you, you look like you're an improved team. You do. And I mean, I look, the players aren't going to look at it like, oh, we have Chicago and we have the 49ers. Like, they're just going week by week trying to win games, and that's fine. But as a fan, I can already say that with a strong feeling, at the end of this season, Doug Peterson and Carson Wentz, will have completed the mission of make this team better than it was last year. And obviously other guys have something to do with that too. But those two guys set out, and the GM and Joe Douglas, Howie Roseman, Joe Douglas, the owner and Jeffrey Lurie hiring Peterson, they draft Wentz. That was a, the plan going forward, get better each year. 7-9 and nine the first year and 5-1 and one into the second, and six games into the second season. <clears throat> that seems like it's an improvement. So that's... That's big to me, and that's what I have to say going into this Monday night football game. You know, I think the Eagles can really make a statement by winning it, and, and it just seems already like this is a guaranteed improved record um, and progression from this team. I mean, it just it just feels that way. Five wins. I mean, who, right now, there's no one that would say the Eagles finish with seven or less wins. So, I mean, wow, it's, it's crazy. And Carson Wentz is playing at another level, so... Let's get into the questions. I mean, that's, that's that's what I've been thinking about. But let's see what, you know, Instagram's thinking about. We got our first question. 
J underscore Brad 13. That's Justin Bradley, who's doing very well in our fantasy league right now. Um, should it be a blackout against the Redskins because it will be their funeral? Uh, yeah, obviously he's referring to the jerseys. Um, yeah, I think they might. I'm, I think they might pull the wear all black uniforms, but you know, gotta still play. Gotta you know, chill with it. It's their funeral talk. We gotta we gotta beat them. So I like that question to start it off. Uh, yeah, it's it's gonna be a really hyped up game, and I hope everyone's going out there has got the link rocking. And I hope the Eagles, no matter what jersey they wear, I hope they make plays and win the game. So, the folk two times asks. Is it safe to say that Fletcher Cox is the best defensive tackle in football? He has another question, so I'll answer that and say, yes, the only guy I'd say who rivals him and may be better than him is Aaron Donald from the uh, L.A. Rams. And, uh, and his second question is, does Alshon finally have his biggest performance as an Eagle? And I would say that there's a big possibility. Uh, it's at home. Um, the Redskins are down Jonathan Allen, who's a good D lineman. They drafted in the first round this year, and uh, they lost him for the season to a Liz Frank foot injury, which is tough. You know, that's it's always usually a season ender, and at first it wasn't supposed to be, but now it is. They also lost Josh Norman a week ago or two weeks ago. They had their bye week to a to a rib injury, and there was word that he might you know try to play or something, but I don't think it's going to happen. Um, and they also, Bashad Breland is going through a little injury right now. So I think, I think that um, he he has a favorable matchup at home against some cornerbacks that probably aren't going to be that great. Um, so if Wentz can find him, I think you will see him have a big game because these this their secondary is hurting right now. They have a couple safeties that you know are hard hitters but haven't played together that long. So maybe you know could try to. You know, manipulate the safeties, get these young corners, these inexperienced corners, you know, backups um, off their mark a little bit. And hopefully we can block it up front. And yeah, Alshon could definitely deliver his biggest game as an Eagle. I could see it. That Ninja Zay asks, with Aaron Rodgers out for this season, is the NFC the Eagles to lose? Uh, I don't know. I think there's still a lot of good teams. Um Green Bay wasn't the only good team. You have Seattle, you have Atlanta. You still have teams in your division. That's kind of where it starts. You know, Dallas, they they were no slouch last year and you know, despite being 2 and 3, there's still, you know, there's still plenty of season left for them to turn it around. You have the Redskins who you play on Monday night, um who, you know, with one quick win against the Eagles on the road Monday night after, you know, this is t- being talked about as the hottest team in football. Um that, that could change everything. So, you know, I don't think the that the division's even the Eagles to lose. I mean, it seems like that at this point, but you still have to win games. I don't think I don't think you can say, oh, this is the whole conference, you know, no way. I mean, you have to you have to see how they play the rest of the year. It's too early to decide, you know, whether or not the Eagles have arrived as this big time player, you know. I think that they're very good, very improved, and will make the playoffs, in my opinion, and that's you know, that's the goal. But I don't think so much that the NFC is, you know, the Eagles to lose. That's that's giving them a little too much credit. Uh, and I, and I'm a positive guy. I, everyone knows that. But that's give that's giving them that's saying like, yeah, there's no one anywhere close to them. And I mean, right now the level they're playing at. But you know, you have to see how they play over the course of the season, not just six games and then. You know, at the end of the year, you decide, you know, okay, this team looks like the best. That's kind of when you decide that going into the playoffs. So it's make the playoffs first. But that's a good question. I mean, a lot of people think the NFC is the Eagles. Like, wow, this is the best team in the in the division, in the conference. And um, they, could go, they could go crazy. They have a great opportunity with the three next home games. I mean, if they win three of all three, that's if, you know, obviously. Then that's eight, eight and one. Then yeah, I mean everyone's looking at you like, wow, that team's balling. But um, yeah, other than that, no, nah, I, I think it's you still have to. I still, I even even then, I would say you still have to wait. I mean, you saw what happened at Dallas. They went thirteen and three, and they lost their first playoff game. So like this regular season stuff, it doesn't really matter that much. It's about the matchup you get in the playoffs, and it's about just I think not having to see Aaron Rodgers in the playoffs is the biggest thing that the Eagles could have had and, and unfortunately I mean you don't want to say oh we, we can't see him like I want to beat him eventually but but he kills us so 
um, get well soon and everything. But um, for right now, you know, that's kind of a big factor is that if the Eagles do make it to the playoffs, they're not going to see the quarterback, the only real quarterback. And I mean, the Seahawks have kind of owned the Eagles, but, but the Eagles play them this year. So we'll have to see what, what happens in that game. Um, Spencer, uh, Spencer underscore PLS asks, can Carson Wentz continue making his case for MVP? And going back to Zay's question, that's kind of the question. I mean, does Carson Wentz stay at this level of play and ignite this offense? And if he does, then then the Eagles have just as good a chance to, to making the uh, the N to main the NFC Championship and and winning the NFC if he plays at this level. If the defense can continue to play at the level they're playing at, even the, and and it's not. I still think the defense can get better, but. Um, they've been winning games without Fletcher Cox, Jordan Hicks, McLeod, um, their Ronald Darby all year. So, and then Sidney Jones obviously has the potential to come back. So, I mean, it's crazy that this defense can get even better. But if Carson Wentz can keep that play up, then of course the Eagles can go. You know, they can go far. And if he, and that's that's the question. I mean, he asked literally, can Carson Wentz continue making his case for MVP? And that's you know, it's it's tough to answer that. That is the question. So I like I can't even answer it. I can't even say yes or no. I mean, I think he can. I believe he can. But that's going to be what dictates how far this team goes. In my opinion, is is can can Wentz continue this type of unbelievable play? I mean, he's putting the ball in the end zone. He's moving the sticks on third down. He's ridiculous on third and long. And um. It's crazy. I mean, it's just crazy to me to see how much he's grown. And if he if he keeps this type of play up, the Eagles have a real shot at going pretty far in, in the playoffs. I mean, it's tough to stop a dude when, when, you know, they're just making all the right decisions and making plays. So hopefully, hopefully he can, but we'll, you know, we'll see. I, I'm, I'm confident in him, though. I've, I've always been from day one, and I think a lot of Eagles fans have, and that's, that's big shows people understand talent and realize what guys can be even when their stats aren't great like last year but you know everyone saw something out of Wentz and we all saw it man we all saw this kid's gonna be special and people didn't want to believe it but he's a special player so uh Tim Wack asks what do you think the score is gonna be on Monday ah man um I'm gonna save that one there's one more question below it I'm gonna save that for last so Smithboy93 asks, do you think Hollins should get more snaps? I think so. I mean, I think he, he'll they'll start working him in, and I, I like that kid, man. He's playing well. But but with what he's doing right now, his role right now, he's making plays. So just to put him in successful situations, don't overwhelm him. If, if you give him more snaps and he starts, like, you know, not really seeing the seeing things right, get him out of there. You know, it's you, you don't want to do that to him. You, so what he's doing right now, he's he's getting in there, he's getting snaps, and I think the more the season goes on, the more they'll play him, and I think I think that's going to be how it goes. So I do think he should, but I think it'll happen. So it's it's good, it's good that uh, it's a good question, good to notice that Mac Collins is really playing well. I mean, by by within the next two years, he's gonna he's going to be uh, he could be a starter for the Eagles with Alshon Jeffrey and. Um, Maybe even Aguilar in the slot still, you know, you never know. So, um, yeah, it's it's a good it's a good question. But also, do you think we'll make another statement Monday night? And then the what do you think the score is going to be? So Monday night, I think exactly what he said. You can make a statement. I said it earlier in the video. Actually, you can make a statement by winning this game. And I think I I hate picking scores. I really do. Uh, I, I do think that the Eagles are going to win. I'm. I'm I'm taking the Eagles, and um, I think I think you could you could say the score. I always say if the Eagles score more than twenty five, they probably win the game. I mean, I just don't think the Redskins are going to come in and drop something huge on the Eagles at home on Monday night with how the the way that the Eagles defense is played. I think they're even better than they were Week One when they played the Redskins, and uh, I think they have a better identity on both sides of the ball, personally. Um, and I think it could be a big a big game for the Eagles, but I think if the Eagles score 27 points, 
they can outscore the Redskins by about 10 to 7, seven to 10. I, th- I would say 27 17, 27 20. Um, I'm going modest with it. Maybe something crazy happens, but, um, you know, just a, a, a res- I think a respectable win. I mean, I think the Eagles are a better team, and I think that. I think that it's going to be hard for Kirk Cousins. It's not going to be like the past couple of years coming into Philly. This defense is really good, and this crowd is super into it right now. And we've had, you know, Thursday, not even to Sunday afternoon, but to Monday night to wait for this game. And I'm telling you, man, this weather that storm early, because if this thing does get off, how it started against Arizona, you're gonna, you're just gonna get blown out because the, this this fan base is ready to just spring out of the, the stadium, just explode out of it. And I think that just the confidence this team has right now is scary. Um, you you know, people can point out the records and beat the who the Eagles have beat, who they haven't beat, this that and the third. But you you come out. And you win a game on Sunday, anywhere, on the road, at home. That's all that matters. And the Eagles have five of them right now. And their confidence is sky high. They're playing like a team at home. They're a different breed of football players. You know, they they are they they feed off each other. They it's it's scary, man. It's they they even do it on the road now. I mean, it's it's they're playing with a different type of energy and you're you're gonna be you're gonna be in for it. Monday night football, man. It's if you if you can't weather that early storm, the Eagles really could jump out on them. But man, um, it's it's gonna be nuts. It's gonna be nuts, and I I can't I can't wait to watch it. Um, there's really nothing more to say. I'm just excited for the game. So uh, thanks for tuning in, guys. Uh, Thursday night football tonight. I honestly don't even know what game it is, so I'm going to check that once I sign off. But uh, but enjoy the game, man. Enjoy the game. Sunday night, uh, sun- Sunday and Sunday night football get, get you through to Monday. Um, you know that whole that whole day is going to feel like oh come on, you know it's it's going to be it's going to be one of those like let's get to it already type type days. But um, it's in due time and. Again, to everyone going to the game, have a good time, stay safe, and uh, and just cheer these Eagles on, cheer them, cheer them into victory. You know, don't let them lose. That's what I always said when I would go to games. We're not going to let them lose today. Give them that energy, and I know you guys will. So, fly Eagles, fly. Have a good day and enjoy the game. Peace.